G'day punters, welcome to another massive edition of All In. This week we have a special guest. Before we go ahead with that, we will be covering the uh, Moya Stakes firstly on Friday. But uh, Louis Willoughby, how are you, mate? Yeah, very good, very good. Um, good weekend of racing coming up kind of across all three days. We've got a group one on Friday night, of course, at the Valley. Uh, then we turn into Saturday which is, you know, AFL Grand Final Day down there in Melbourne. So that's going to be a big day for the punters. We're back on Sunday for Group 1 Underwood. Um, so if you're a sports fan this weekend and you're not excited, I genuinely cannot help you because it's going to be one of the great weekends all time. So I can't wait to review. Outstanding. And uh, Dean Watling's been benched. We've sent him back into the beach for a bit of a rest up and we've replaced him with a more than a capable replacement in Brody Nixon. Brody, how are you? G'day boys, Good day everyone. Yeah, and I'm dressed up for the occasion as well. I've got a full suit at work. I look like an absolute pelican. <laughs> That's all right. Louis usually the one looking like a pelican in his suit, mate. So uh, you've taken the baton this time around. But thanks for joining us. And uh, as Louis touched on, so we do have Moya Stakes on Friday night. We do have a Golden Rose, huge Golden Rose at Rose Hill on Saturday. And then we'll be heading to Sandown. Wow. For the Underwood. Mm. Mm. There you go. Righto, boys. Before we uh, get stuck into... Uh, into the big racing ahead. Let's just touch on uh, the weekend and have a bit of a review. So a uh, bit of a topic for discussion here. Animo, three of five lame. We'll just have a bit of discussion off camera about what three of five lame actually was. And I think we've come to grips that it's not that great. Um, boys, firstly, how do you think Animo performed? And given that, um, how impressive was the run? And the second question I get to answer is, if he, if he was yours, are we sending him straight to the breeding barn? We'll start with you, Brody. Yeah, no, the three out of five lame was probably the most knocking thing the next morning. Just couldn't quite believe it. Now, I sent a message to a mate who trains up a Rocky and we said, oh, three out of five lame, how bad is it? And he just says, pull up stumps for the prep. And then we thought, well, you got a cult like that, we probably won't see him again. And like you say, he sounds like he's all right now. So just saying off camera, it could be anything. He might have just not too sure. I don't quite know the degrees of lameness very well, but it could it be something as small as stepping on a rock or maybe something like that that causes something immediately to be not very good but can recover quite quickly. Yeah, what are your I'm, thoughts, mate? Yeah, I, I'm with you, Brody. Like to go from three out of five lame, and again, I, I'm not comprehensively understanding all degrees of lameness from five out of five to one out of five or none, but to me, and they said that they vetted him three times before he got on the truck to go back to Osborne Park. Um, and the last vet, well, the last, not the last vet, but the last scope they did out of him said three and a, three out of five. Then by the time he got off the float, he was one out of five. So says the uh, Dali vet back at the, the stables. And then now on Monday, he's 100%. So look, if you just take everything at face value, it's, it's great news because... Um, and I've been saying this a few times on the podcast, he, Animo, could genuinely be one of the, if not the best horse Godolphins has, has ever had in Australia, and they've had some freaks, right? But he is just an absolute machine. So as you said, Brody, if it was three out of five and it's pull-up stumps, the prep may be a career if it's a cult. That's a huge, huge shame. Um, but you just have to take it on face value. If it's 100%, hopefully no breeding barn and the, and the prep pushes on because um, it would be a shame to see him go. But... Let's say when he comes out next start, isn't there just a slight niggling in there somewhere that goes, is the horse 100% again? Massive. Because obviously going to take it on face value. It's, massive, I don't know. massive niggle. Like, honestly, massive niggle. And as a punter, you just, mate, you've got to be scared. You've got to be scared. I'll tell you what, though, Vin Cox said earlier this morning, he looks terrific. He is good in the eye, eating up, and has had no butte. So that's a really good sign. So fingers crossed, but I wouldn't be charming into the three dollars fifty in the Cox Plate, lads. Righto, uh, that's enough of Animo Nature Strip. How do they beat him? I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there watching the race with my partner, and I said, "Oh, he might be in a bit of trouble. He's not the quickest way. He's taking a sit. I'm waiting for him to throw his head about." He just travelled like Chris Wallace said. He thinks he's the mature sprinter now, the best thing he could be now, and he's the finished product. And I tell you what, taking a sit, travelling, presenting at the turn. Oh, I couldn't quite believe it. He's such a freak of nature. And just watching him from his first victory and watching him all the way through, he's gone from an enigma to a talent to a superstar. He's a dead set champion. And you can't not, if he can take a sit now, good luck. Yeah, yeah, agreed. I know 
Our mate Dino, who's currently sunning himself on a beach somewhere, is a big fan of lost and running and maybe perhaps being able to turn the tables. I think maybe you, Gano, as well in, in that camp. Oh, how? You couldn't couldn't possibly, I don't think. Like, let, okay, yes, lost and running, taking ground off at the end, but let's say Nature Strip gets it his way in the Everest, or even if he doesn't, I just, I, I cannot see them turning the tables. And I, you know I'm not a big Nature Strip fanboy, so for me to come here and say that he's, He's close to his oh, look. I, I want to call him a moral and try and mock everyone that's on him for the Everest, but I won't. I won't. I'll let you know. How, how about the hiding I caught for, for saying he's, he's a great bet at $4? Absolute hiding. Now $2 is 10 Everyone can jam it. You're living Probably in that. the past, mate. Stop living in the past. Uh, <laughs> mate, very much so in the future with a futures ticket. Now, <laughs> what I will say, though, is, gents, there's a horse that nobody's really, really willing to pop up and talk about. Mask Crusader was. Huge. No, don't start. <laughs> was huge, right? Over unsuitable distance in the worst going. Horse mm. is going better than what it was last prep. Mm. Lost and running is another one of mine. There's a th- they're the only three. They are the only three. I told I, told, I, I, I I'm, saying, I'm, Yeah, go, Brady. Go, Louis. Oh, I was going to say, I'm, I was a Mask Crusader fanboy. I backed him more. I backed him in the Everest when he ran second and. A last prep, I think if you put a line through it, he obviously things went wrong, nothing went correct. If you put a line through his last three runs, last prep, and also the classic legend stakes at the end of the spring last year, his forms, his forms impeccable. And that first up run, his trial was a bit, yeah, here we go. And that piece of work, as you say, again, it was terrific. And the longer they went through the line, the better he got. Mm-hmm. Give you a see here. I've his- never backed the horse. I couldn't. I've never. I couldn't never stand it. I'm keen to bet. There you go, Louis. And I know you like the horse too, Louis. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. And I said, if you go back a few podcast episodes ago, I said he's come back really well. They were all talking about him in the yard. Uh, I was talking to some of the people from Sky Thoroughbred Central who were there on the morning he trialed me. They just said he's a different animal again, this preparation, which is scary. So um, we obviously are praying if you're on him for no wet tracks, uh, etc. So he needs a few things to go his way and he doesn't have – um, the greatest racing pattern, especially at the top level. But, yeah, he is definitely, as you say, Gano, flying under the radar for sure. Love it. If you can get a Rambic true with a drying surface, it could be a chance. Righto, boys. Speaking of horses that are up and about, Brody's going to give us a horse to follow. I will. And then Lou is going to chime in with right of the week. Off you go, Brody. I think, yeah, top ranked. His return was sensational on um, Saturday, he was terrific. Sat behind the speed, only the one trial. It was quite a soft trial as well. He was terrific. So I'm going to throw up that horse, but stray. It was massive from last. It, oh, I, I couldn't believe it did in the front of hole. I was, um, I was filthy. I put out a tweet on Saturday morning. I thought she was just, she was ready to go and the trial was good. She faced a few nonnies in the trial. They weren't quite the strongest. And coming up against that grade, I thought, I was, I was walking through Woolies at Chatswood, carrying on like a pelican. I thought she was home. <laughs> And then she couldn't quite get there. But I think she died late. She's going to be really good when she can land closely. She box seated when bolting in first up last prep. I think I think she's back better than ever. Mate, honestly, you summed it up well. It was all over. I, it was only for only four lengths off him at the eight hundred. Off that's not off them. That's off the second last horse. Anyway, tell you what, boys. Roll that, roll that into I had Madame Pomery going at fifty oh. in couple of races later and I'll tell you what I went to work and I was just staring at the wall throughout the night trying to cover races from Grafton and Cohen I was still crying and I was still crying in my coffee cup you'd be looking for DS's half price um, chicken and coals that's how good you're going so they are mate. now I'll tell you what there's that highway was pretty hot highway Shalstar was a good winner but there was two horses behind it dead set worth flying now I don't know if this data is correct I'm going to go back and double check it but Feel the Night has run the second best last 800 of the meeting out of that race. So I don't know how, like, I don't know how that horse just doesn't come out and blow them away next start. It was very unlucky. Another one, Salir, from that race as well. There's just a couple of um, sort of rough ones there. I tell you what, Never Talk was pretty, pretty good late and Brigantine was huge. So there's a couple um, just, you know, of the benchmark races or highways that some horses to follow. Question with Brigantine, it got out over the mile, if I'm not wrong, in its latest preparation, returned gelded with strong late. What do you reckon its best trip is, Genna? On the ratings, uh, the 1,600-metre last, um, last run of last prep was top rate. So if you've got a race in mind, get the punters uh, informed, eh? 
Right out of the way, what do you got, mate? Uh, right of the week, just quickly on stray, you boys can join the stray train. I got off that so long ago and you'll come to me in a few weeks time and you'll go, Lewis, I should have jumped off the train with you. <laughs> you yeah. Mate, it was, in he this game, won, and then it was all over at the 300. Yeah, but that's it for this prep. It's done. It, done. I promise you, like I, uh, Brody, I was on it with Brett on its debut because we know the guy who bred it, right? And its debut was an absolute moral beat. And Re- Regan Bayless, through no fault of his own, just got caught up in traffic. Last prep, first up, came up and bolted in, then did, did nothing. Fair beat in, you know, group one races. First up is your chance. And if you get on at a price and it doesn't hit, see you later. It's wait for next preparation. You're spot on. It is, you want to find the right race, obviously, for it. But the worry is now it's going to be really overbet by the looks. It's just such mm. a flashing light. There might, there might be a, a good race at Bong Bong or something for it. Anyway... Uh, James McDonald. We'll send it up to gets, Rocky. That'd be a good horse <laughs> yeah, for Rocky. That's right. James McDonald gets my ride of the week uh, on no specific horse as well, just because he can win on a broomstick at the moment. I could have given you four horses that were his ride of the week, right? Um, I did some stats on him this morning just to be able to back this up. I mean, we all know he's flying and he's winning all these races. So I went on to a punting form and I went, okay, on horses that SP $4 and less, how's he going in the last six months? 52% winning strike rate. 14% profit on turnover. So if he is on a horse that is, well, if you're going $4 or less, it's either favourite, second favourite, or maybe third favourite in a bit of an even market. So if he's top three in the market, he's winning more than half the time, which is just incredible. So Incredible style. Uh, yeah. J-Mac, if he's on something in the market that you like, just back the truck up. He's unbelievable at the moment. And that segues... In such a strong well. jockey room as well. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. <sighs> So that segues as well into the feature races on this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Of course, he'll be down uh, taking a few of these rides, Golden Rose, etc. Let's start with the Moya Stakes, though. And favourite for the Moya Stakes was Paul Laley at about $4 with the tab just before they got rid of the market to refresh it. I know that Rothfire was in there at $5. Uh, Bella Nipatina was definitely at the top of the market as well. So without a full market to go off just yet from what I remember this morning. That's kind of how it was uh, panning out. Brody, I reckon I know who you're going to tip, but I'll throw to you first for your thoughts of the Moya. Tell you what, the Queenslanders, we're going, we're going better than eight in a row. Um, they're going real well. The only worry for me, obviously, Rothfire, he was terrific first up. Um, heavy eight at the moment, currently the Valley. So that's the slight query going around. And behind it, the Inferno. I was listening to a few of the on-track people there at the Valley for his first up run. And they, a few people mentioned he looked like he just came out of a paddock. He was just, he was nowhere near ready. And I think he might have run second in this race last year. I think he's going to be, he's going to be right up there at the end. So the Inferno and a Rothfire, the two horses I'm looking at, if it dries out, the Rothfire can really be boosted. But slight query on how wet the track is. But those two for me early. Yeah, only one horse I want to be with, and that's Paul Ely. Uh, very, very impressive first up record. Three wins, four starts. Low flying, gets J-Mac. It's just going to be a J-Mac weekend. Just follow him. He's flying, fill up. Some smart he's got on around 750. and Couldn't possibly tell you who they were. D. Watling, Earl Willoughby. Um, but, uh, yeah, for mine, Paul Ely. I struggled to split them, Paul Ely and Rothfire. Uh, and I'll tell you why. I was Camp Rothfire for a while because it's going to have a fitness edge over Paul Lely. It was really good winning that McEwen. And that was close to, if not an equal career peak for Rothfire as well. So clearly flying. It wasn't no fluke win. Um, second up, and if it can prove, if it can improve again off what it did first up, it, it just goes to another level, right? And as I mentioned, fitness edge. Then I come to Paul Lely because I go, Rothfire doesn't like it wet. And Paul Ely's trials were good and its first up record was very strong. So when they were $4 and $5 this morning, I just went Rothfire at the dollar more price. But really, the race fell away for me after those two. So you could just back both and fingers crossed and you should be getting a result there. So um, we'll wait to see when that market refreshes again. But yeah, Rothfire and Paul Ely surely dominate that. I couldn't really uh, land into anything else. The Inferno perhaps, but its racing pattern is, is hard to to gravitate towards, and it would need a really hot tempo in front. And, Louis, just quietly, so on uh, Friday night, punters, you're sitting back, chilling out. Just flick over to Sky One. you got Brody Nixon there hosting, and the uh, young Lewis will be on the tip. Come for that, Louis. Yeah, it's going to be 
B1 and B2 sitting side by side on Friday night on Sky One. So, yeah, crack a uh, night, ra- night racing returns, of course. So it's going to be Brody and I hopefully throughout uh, the back end of the spring end of summer uh, covering those on Friday night for Sky One. Obviously, the Valley, Packenham, and then when Canterbury kicks off as well. Brody, just keep the phone there on uh, on the sale, mate. If Louis is struggling, we'll send you a few winners across, all right? <laughs> I appreciate it. Sunny coast as well, so I know they'll be, yeah. I'll be oh. tossing the four oh. tiers straight back. Is it so. On the poly, or is it that leader monorail poly, or is it the grass track? Oh, I'm pretty sure the grass track, so the Friday nights kick off. So, oh, yeah. yeah, some very fun racing. And the good thing is you got interesting time of year so always the top trainers t golan and steve o'day they love to pop out those good horses at the sunny coast too so good time of year there you go boys how good's that righty let's go to the golden rose moving on to saturday and uh, this is going to be a cracker we've followed it of course the run to the rose is a key lead in and we've kind of gone through Trying to find a winner all throughout, and the market settled on this with Tab in secret at three fifty. Golden Mile five dollars, Jacano eight dollars, Fiber nine dollars. Double figures the rest. She's extreme starts them as an eleven dollar chance. Brody, uh, which good often runner are you siding with in the Golden Rose? <laughs> I'm not too sure. Not too sure. In secret and Golden Mile were both terrific. Jacano was sensational though in Victoria. He was really good. He's been good virtually all throughout his career, but you'll know the Victorian horses better than I do, Lewis. I'm really keen to hear your thoughts. He looks like he's just come back better than ever, and probably the most impressive thing for him, he's never shown any early toe in his races or at the trials and jump outs that is in Victoria, but he settled much closer first up, and he was really, really strong defending half cabin, and we saw what half cabin did on Saturday. It was sensational. So Jack and O for me, I'm quite keen on the Victorian travelling over, but in regards to the Godolphin pair, I wouldn't mind having Golden Mile on top of it in secret, but it's going to be a ripping race. Yeah, Yeah, it's been going record to say that uh, in secret is a two-length better horse than Golden Mile and a two-length better horse than Zoo Gotcha. So for anyone with any queries on there, in secret is the one on the way up and for mine, the one that's dead set flying. But we all know it's racing and barrier draws and a run of race and things like that all will play a part. But uh, in secret... 350, pretty short now. There, there was around that $4, $4.50. And if you shop well, you might still even find a bit of that. Um, but yeah, in secret on top. Very, very keen to see how Jack and O goes. Just from memory, it, it's had a go at Rose Hill. Yeah, lads, is that right? Yeah, in, in the red slipper. 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 How'd it go? Good. Good. Finished off hard. Got back, finished off hard. I think it yeah. ran six, seven, eight, something like that. So you could, I definitely I think it, couldn't steer out of that then. No. Sweep, sweeping uh, run as well. Had to go quite mm. wide on the wet track, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Look, this is a cracking race. The top three in the market here, this is as good as we're going to see them as a three-year-old, I think, to be fair. Minus you know, a few in the Caulfield Guineas, Aft Cabin, um, and a few of those Melbourne ones, Giga Kick, et cetera. But in terms of Sydney three-year-old racing, this is as, probably as good as it's going to get. I can't wait to see how they go. Without pricing up the race from a price perspective, I appreciate you said in secret two lengths better than Golden Mile. Um, so I couldn't back Golden Mile to beat in secret, but I couldn't back in secret maybe at $3.50. It is short. Gee, Jack, I know a good price at $8, Brody. I'm, I'm really in that camp just on price. I think perhaps... It's hard to line them up, right? In Secret, obviously, was a very strong winner, but so was Jack and I. They were in two different races going two different ways. So how do you say one's better than the other? With certainty, I'm not sure. So three fifty dollars v 8 I think at this stage of betting, I'd have gun them ahead money on Jack and I. Um, as we mentioned, huge win goes straight past Alf Cabin, who's won again and his favourite for a Caulfield Guineas. Uh, that was a career peak run for Jack and I. So obviously, it's returned as a three-year-old in cracking order, like... What I said with Rothfire, it has the scope to improve uh, second up. And I just think at the price, I just wanted to mention as well, I have to, Sebenak, if it makes the field, it's $51. Uh, they scratched it a few times. It was really good fresh, although it finished a mile off the winner. These sectionals were good. It didn't like the Valley last time out. So if it runs at 51, I've got to have like a dollar on it, right? Just just to say that if it, if it wins, oh, I backed it, boys, how good I was tipping it throughout. So... Um, we'll see how we go, but if you're focusing on the top end of the market, which you should be, it's going to be a cracking addition between those three runners, and I can't wait to see uh, which way it pans out. 
So we'll take a sit and watch there for the Golden Rose on Saturday in Sydney to Sunday for the Underwood Stakes, another group one here. Uh, it was I was trying to do the form this morning to see who was going to be accepted. It looks as though it might be a pretty small field, perhaps six, seven, eight maybe runners. Uh, and with the tap at the moment, pre-noms, Zaki's a $2.10 favourite. I'm Thunderstruck at three fifty. dollars Mr. Brightside, four fifty, dollars and Alligator Blood is an $8 chance, 11 for Cascadian and Mawanga to start them there in double figures. Bros, did you have a thought on the Underwood? This is going to be another ripper on Sunday. Really looking forward to this race. Mr. Brightside's a real interesting runner. I couldn't have him, especially at $4.50. He hasn't really beaten much this preparation, despite how very impressive he's been to the eye. I thought I am thunderstruck. Now, I was on Alligator Blood at Flemington a couple of weeks ago, and I thought a couple of hundred metres ago, I know Alligator Blood's got that big query over the mile, but I thought he was home and hose. But I'm thunderstruck. He's just a winner. He's just a trait. He's a chaser. He's an alpha. Azaki's going very well as well. Slight query was scratched. They said he didn't pull up the best from his first up run. We're talking about Enemo and how you can approach him this preparation. And if you follow those comments from the stable, Zaki, is there a slight query going forward over the next few days? It'll be interesting to see whether the extra week was actually about how he's pulled up following the first up run. But Zaki was very good, albeit he was on the fence. He did have everything his own way. I'm thunderstruck. This horse just continues to just jump over every hoop he's put up. Mr. Brightside, I think he had a fair few kilos off him in that Group 1 win during the autumn. I can't see him beating on Thunderstruck in 1,800 metres. It wasn't a very taxing second up run, but just his sectional was late. His work through the line was sensational. 1,800 metres at Sandown. Really, really keen to follow Miss on Thunderstruck. Hmm. You know? Yeah, look, it's a pretty simple race for mine. I think there's only two possible, Zaki and I'm Thunderstruck. What I will say is that I have it on pretty good authority that they um, – they, they saw the heavy eight and they just put a pen job straight away. That decision was made pretty early as far as the rumor mill goes anyway in regards to Zaki. So I wouldn't be too concerned. Um, pretty sure uh, that they were more than happy to head down to Sandown. Who knows, though? It doesn't, hasn't stopped raining in Melbourne either. So you're not sure what track they'll, you, you'll get on a log down there. But for mine, it's between Zaki and I'm Thunderstruck. I don't think there's any edge in that bet in the market. Just wait and see. Get your powder dry. Um, but I'll tell you what, it'd be a cracking race uh, to round out what will be a huge, huge weekend of sport and racing. Now, boys, before we close off, just to give me your best all-in play, and uh, then I'll finish with Dino's as well. He shot one through sitting on the beach um, mid-4X. Right, yeah, I'll quickly whip through it here. Mine is Jacano in the Golden Rose at $8. I just thought the price disparity was too good. You've got to have something on it. And hoping, praying, fingers crossed, the Melbourne form can defeat the Sydney form. Ready? Yes, yeah, so I think Jackano, $8, great price in the Golden Rose. But I think um, Ellsberg and the Shannon Stakes coming up will be very hard to beat. I think it was really unlucky last start. All the eyes on Mr. Mozart carrying on, throwing the race away. But Ellsberg never got clear running, was really strong through the line. He's $4.50 alongside Old Flame. Old Flame, albeit, came out to defeat Purple Sector, who was terrific on Saturday in ground that wasn't suited. So, slight query there on Old Flame. Espion is $8. He can't back her again until she does everything right. She lazy and so poorly. So I think Ellsberg, very nice bet in the Shannon Stakes. Right, Brody. So you'll be uh, fighting for your spot back on the show, going head to head with Dean Watling, who in the same race, best all in play, Die Mill at fifteen dollars. So the odds are in your favour, Dino. You might be off for another week. Die Mill at fifteen dollars, and mine. Well, I know it's short now, but I still think Paul Ely is a great bet at the four dollars. Um, J Max going all the way down there to Mexico for for that ride and. It'll give, obviously, you need a good draw down there, mm. but uh, it'll give you a huge sight. Right, boys, that's super stuff. Before we uh, chime in to Wednesday's best bets, punters, make sure you subscribe. Jeez, we're nearly at a stage where we can do some live YouTube. So if we can get those numbers up, get those subscribers up, whoa, might just lob on the track and give you some live, uh, some live footage from. Uh, Maybe we'll be there on Everest Day. So get subscribing and you'll get a bit of that. Now, I'll tell you what, boys. Louis, you got a midweek best bet for me because I've got one tomorrow. I'm ready to go. Beautiful. You love it. You love a Tuesday best bet, Gannon. I will say that. Uh, yeah, mine's coming up Wednesday, Bendigo. Race four, number eight, Spylark, was very good at Bendigo in similar heavy conditions over 1,300 first up. Was going to win. Got a crucial check at the 150 just for a few strides. Held it up. Ended up being beaten 0.9 of a length, ran third. It wins without that check and clear running. 
Uh, it's going to be second up here. It ran second best last 200 of the day as well, with not a whole lot of favours, as mentioned, with that check at the 150. So all things being equal, Spiral Arc, second up, Atones, out to 1,400 metres. Thank you. Race for number eight. Yeah, good. Very good. Very good. Hopefully. Yeah, very uh, I've, good. Got, I've got one in race number one at Doombin. I think Dutch Gold, there's not going to be any prices up for a little bit, but I think it's going to be winning race number one at Doombin. Just got a little bit too far back, worked through the line strongly at Eagle Farm, gets back up to 16, 50 metres, draws a little bit better. It's not the quickest away, but hopefully it can land a little bit closer from gate number six. Now, race number three at Roots. Race number three at Canterbury. Roots, I don't think we'll be getting a price at all, but her first start win was sensational. It was just a massive performance. Huge. I'm not sure if Gano's got the numbers there next to him ready to go. I highly doubt he does, but <laughs> it was sensational. And a shout-out to Bray Sikulski. He's got another one from Toowoomba. Little mix, formerly with Michael Nolan. He had hinged. He's gone shopping at Toowoomba once again, and he's got Lil Mix following a sixth at Eagle Farm. She'll get out of a further ground. Ran third behind Rebel Rama. And our intrigue during the Queensland Carnival. But Bray, he's got another one from Toowoomba. He's got an eye for him, Bray, doesn't he? Jeez, he's got an eye for him. He's all over it. Now, you ask and I shall deliver. Roots ran the... Here we go. Fastest last 400, 200, and the second last, fastest last 600 of the meet. Very, very, very impressive. Anyway, I digress. We're not going to get a price, are we? No nah. price yet. Nah, no chance. You might, you might get $1.75. <laughs> Have a look at the race. Who knows? You might. You never know. Um, boys, have been orange? Nah. Good oh, call, huh? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful place. I'm going to head to Orange. I'm going to go race seven, number five, Night Driver. This horse is off a 402-day break. Fan oh. Cam. It was enormous last start. Over 800 metres, it has. I reckon it's given them 10 lengths at the 400 metres. Absolutely flying home, run the fastest last 600, and only goes up to the 1,000 this time around. It ran in um, highways on heavy tracks. It was enormous. If it runs up to that, it blows them away. $4.40, please. Thank you. Something for the kids. What do you reckon, boys? Love it. Well, I've got one for you in race number two, if you want. Yeah, go. I didn't mind one. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Twiggy Lady didn't troll. Trolled like really just over race badly behind behind the speed of the troll. But it comes to a race at Goulburn I really like. Amelia Ramagna came out from that race. Was I think it was almost favourite at Randwick in a winter mm. race just a couple of weeks later. That form has really stood up out of that Randwick race, but it was caught three wide on the speed. Alicia Collett goes aboard. The trial's about a month ago. Was defeated six and a half lengths in that trial. They went up $9. It's now six fifty. I'll have a few little shillings on that horse, but Orange, I think, um, yeah. I'll leave that one up to you, Gano. Mate, I'm with you. Uh, I saw it. I'm with you. I like it. I even had a chat with my mate Dino, who's sitting, as we refer to, still sitting on the beach drinking his beer. And I said that this horse is a good little bet there. And I agree with you. It was wide. And that, um, was it Lady Regina you said? Good horse. Was good horse. Amelia Ramagna. I might have butchered it, but I think it's Amelia Ramagna. Not the first time I butchered it, man. I butchered nearly everything I touch. Right up, boys. Thank you very much, Panners. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, share. Give Brady a thank you for chiming in. Um, good stuff, mate professional always boys can't wait to see you guys on friday night we'll be chiming in from uh, the crowsness hotel can't wait to see it <laughs> the crowy mate unbelievable <laughs> if you're there punish you want to buy us a beer don't be shy <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. so if they get up if they get up orange they'll have to oh yeah see you boys yeah see you guys